Welcome back Legionnaires to a new Rise of Mordor battle for you on the channel and it is a 3v1 scenario to start with and we have here Breland looking out over the hills at, uh, I, I presume this is, yes this is Isengard, Isengard, they're looking out over Isengard, look at them, look at these boys, they are going to be scared, look at all those white hands in the distance, they cannot see, and yes so Breland has found itself in a defensive position that it has to hold. I mean, it's pretty a strong defensive position here. There's a huge cliff. But the Isengard, the Dunladings, and also the Eastlings, strangely, have made a strange alliance and are now fixated on taking down uh, Breland. And they've surrounded them on this hill. And, I mean, it's, like I said, it's fairly well defended. But, I mean, against three, uh, three opposing armies, I don't think even, like, these Breland spearmen were able to hold them back very long. Neither these bodyguards over here. There's only two ways up, two choke points I can see. This one and that one over there that we were looking at. I mean, I kind of guess it's three if you break through both sides. Um, but there is also two reinforcing armies. Um, we have Dol Amroth here um, with their very elite looking army. Look at these boys, the Tarnostian spearmen. Coastal Sea Watch, just with their little emblems, just to remind them that they're from the coast. Um, I like to see that. And we also have uh, Amrothian Archer Militia, and we have Knights of the Silver, of the Silver, of the White Tree. There are Knights of the Silver Swan, though, which is what I'm getting them mixed up with. Um, and when we have, what do we have at the back here? More Knights of the Silver Swan, Seaward Sword Infantry. These guys are some of my favourite. I don't know why, I mean, they, they look exactly the same as the... Gondor infantry, but they they just something about like their emblems is just it's just nice. And then you've got Haven Guard in the back as well. And then we have Gondor is here as well. Gondor Dol Amroth's uh I guess you call this is um well, Dol Amroth's sort of like a tributary to Gondor, I guess. And he can't really I don't think that this is all of Gondor's army. I think there is still quite a lot hidden. Um, you've got more Knights of the Silver Swan, lots of Gondor cavalry. These guys just look excellent. Just look at these guys. Look at these guys. Um, they look just amazing, don't they? Like this man here. Look at him. He's ready to kill. Um, but yes, as you can see, we're using the sub mod um, to get Dol Amroth My along with, um, well, and Eriador in, in the game. Um the ally is being attacked, so where are they being attacked? Oh, of course, over here. I'm guessing archers already firing down on them. But we have begun, as you can see. The Isengard, it looks like, is going to be the first in, and shortly followed by the Dunladings. Well, actually, all of them. I think they're all attacking all at once. Oh, yeah, they are. Let's see these Eastlings come up then. Are they going to just skirmish off to start with and then send in the infantry, or are they going to... Send in some infantry first and just try and rush their way through. I mean, look at these guys. What are these? Look, these aren't low-key room warriors, are they? No, Barrig warriors, is going to say. They look amazing. The artwork that's gone into it, just amazing. So, yeah, this video was sent in to me by one of the creators of the submod. And I'd just like to say thank you very much for the replay. It is, it's looking so good so far. I mean, not seen a lot at the moment, but we're about to... Oh, fire arrows! Devastating, devastating. And they took a load of guys out. That's very effective for firers. Usually they're just to break people. They're actually getting a lot of kills. And these uh, scouts are going in against uh, the Breland spearmen. And they are going to... They're probably going to end up dying. Look at that guy. He just got impaled. On the spear there. That was insane. Um, we are using some other mods that include... Uh, anim to improve animations. Which is probably where that animation came from. Along with the, uh, um, well, and the submod, of course, and Rome 2 buildings. So there are a few others. And now we have a clash of infantry over here. Are these more scouts? They do look like scouts, yes. Clashing into more Breland spearmen. And they'll, I think Breland spearmen probably have the be the beating over these scouts. Um, yes, winning a mele me uh, melee decisively. Hopefully Urukai archers in the back can help with support. Support. They look like they're taking down these Baggins. Private guard. No, Baggins is private guards. I mean, they're throwing Javis in. Um, but they're taking fire. And, so, I mean, Baggins is private guard. They're needed to defend the Bagginses. And um, we now have Dunedain Woodlanders over here. Scaring off some Dunedain archers. 
And we now have also have the Varig Warriors and Eastlings clashing in. So neither side is going to skirmish the enemy front lines first, which is potentially what I would have done. Um, you're, get, you're three against one. You might as well just try and take this army out without damaging your infantry too much. But you, saving yourself enough ammo to take on the other two armies, which I guess is what the attacking armies have to worry about, is what do they commit to destroy this army um, when they know that there's two more armies arriving. And, they, and no offence to Breland, but the other two armies are definitely more professional. I mean, the guys are getting gunned down now. Oh! Excellent kill with the mace there. Can he get another one? Yes, he can. Excellent. The Varig uh, Warriors broke like instantly. I mean, they are a two-handed weapon. Using a two-handed weapon, I guess, so they are uh, vulnerable to archers. These Eastlings just holding off, barely engaging. It looks like Breland's taking the, the uh, offensive against them almost. Well, here we, oh, no, here they come. They're coming back in. They've rallied, I presume, and they're going back in. Scouts over here are actually breaking. Breland's actually holding off quite well. It's um, But in fairness, both um, Eastlings and the Isgard have sent in their probably their weaker units. I mean, these scouts are still holding here, but they are losing decisively. I mean, looking that they have 200 in a unit, they are going to be weaker than these guys. We only have 160. And still, oh, no, here they come. There's now movement from Gondor and Dol Amroth. Very, very interesting. Dol Amroth is the first reinforcement, it seems like. It may be two waves of reinforcements, I think, because Gondor is not moving yet. Our men are breaking up. That is going to be interesting. So, I wonder who will have to deal with it. It looks like if I was the attackers or the baddies and I was in charge, I would be saying uh, the Dunladings need to be in charge of defense of the rear because they're, they're the forces that aren't really being committed at the moment. I would also probably commit a lot of this cavalry that um, these things are brought, like the Bane of the Steps, I'd commit them to help in the rear because they're going to need all the cavalry you can get, you're going to need all the spears you can get as well, um, just to stop all of this Dol Amroth cavalry. And here actually comes Gondor as well, Gondor is on the move. So it's going to be all of them at once, that is pretty scary. So anyway, we'll quickly get back to the battle and have a look at what's going on here. So it doesn't look very good for these things over here at the moment. Looks like they may be in a spot of trouble. And they're getting gunned down from the side here by more Baggins' guard. You love to see the hobbits pulling their weight and killing some evil men. Oh, yes. I've missed this mod. I've not really played a lot of it recently, but I mean, or shown a lot of it recently on the channel, but God, it's good. Excellent. Kill them all. These guys, yeah. I don't think these Eastlings are going to last much longer. I mean, these Merchant Guard are actually seem very good. Oh! The Bagginses are now getting fired upon themselves. Who are they getting fired on by? Oh, Eastling Archers in the rear. They'll probably be Varig Archers. Oh, gosh. Now, this could... I mean, these guys just uh, need a, if they've got a shield wall ability, they really need to do it or something like that. Can't really remember where Breland. Oh, some nasty kills. Punching this guy to death. Oh, and he's killed him. That's an excellent animation. I love this mod for animations. I need to use it more in my own battles. Excellent. I mean, these these things are so bloodied up. Let's quickly have a look at the other side, see if Isengard's really made an offensive. It looks like they might have. Oh dear, looks like, yep, yeah, Breland's broken. Breland is broken here. Well, area door, but the Breland spearmen are broken here. Baggins' his private guard's been sent in, and it's the scouts that did it. So now he's sending up more elite stuff. Looks like he's got Nazhag guardians, which is his general unit. He's got pikes, berserkers. And Urukai crossbows all making a move now to go in this direction. And he's got more pikes. Though it does seem like Isengard's already running out of quite a lot of stuff. He looks like he's committed quite a lot. And he's not really made a dent. So, I mean, well done, Bre uh, Eriador, so far for doing what you've done. They've made an excellent defense so far. Oh! Fire is now going down on these berserkers. Who really need support from some more normal infantry. Because Ber Berserkers are great, but they're better at a flanking unit. Oh, gosh. Those look like 
Maybe Dunedain archers? I, yeah, Breeling Gatesman. Bre so slightly cheaper archers, but they're still going to be good enough to kill some dirty Urukai. But I mean, these Breeling Spearmen have definitely been worth their money. Like, they've held up so many units to just get gunned down by archers, which is what they needed to do, really. Like, the archers are going to be the, uh, being the saving grace here and holding these guys back. Because volley after volley, there's at least 20, 30 guys going down. I mean, Baggins' is private guard here. I mean, the Isengard general just needs to send through a unit through this gap here. Because there's nobody here. There's like three guys, um, three brilliant spearmen, and that's it. Because the private, Baggins' is private army, or whatever, the private guard, are, um, have been cut off by the scouts here. They really need to get around. Yeah, private guard, I thought it was. And Hobbit and Bowman now, they're getting gunned down. I mean, they're starting to lose a lot of stuff over here, a lot of breaking going on. But there's, I mean, but they're still holding strong over here. They might want to send some, oh no, not good. Not good, they've broken through here. Oh, actually no they haven't. I keep thinking the baddies are the reds. They've pushed back, if anything, and they're going on the offensive. Greenway vanguards coming in to try and attack them, and they've broken them here as well. They really don't need the forces that they have, some of these forces here. They probably want to send in their general or in another infantry unit just to try and do some charges. Certainly a general on these berserkers would definitely do some damage. But yeah, they're in real trouble now. And it looks like engagement in the rear has begun. Yes, Gondor is Gondor and Dol Amroth have arrived. We now have cavalry battles in the rear. Oh my goodness, it's chaos. This battle is chaos, but it's excellent. Um... I don't really know who will win this. As Gondor cavalry are fairly strong, but they're not. These berserk, these um, Dunlidian cavalry look very elite, and they're Lancer cavalry, so they need to get out of combat quite soon. I would have thought. Or are they? Are they Lancer? They should be Lancer cavalry. They're heavy spear cavalry, so yeah, they probably want to get out of combat soon after this. Well, these guys are melee. Oh, they're only medium though, so they may they are actually getting cut down. Yep, yeah, smart move by um, to send in some Dunherd swordsmen. Look at this line of Dunherd swordsmen, though. Marching. All oh, their bones on. Excellent. They really need to get out of there. Yep, yeah, and the Gondor cavalry is doing wisely to get out of there. They need to get the other units out um, because they don't really want to keep them in combat much longer. Bane of the Steps being committed to help out in the rear. Good to see that. Gondor's in. Infantry, well, Dol Amaros infantry is all up here. I don't think Gondor's got much infantry. It has a little. What's it brought then? It's brought Knights of the... S it's brought Knights of the White Tree. These guys look excellent. I don't think I've seen these, shown these guys off before. They look excellent. And then we've got some typical Gondor infantry. So Gondor has clearly gone with a heavy cav um, build. And Dol Amaros kind of gone with a bit of both. Our general's under attack. Oh dear. Oh yes. Which general? This is the Eastling general. He's actually they're committing him. This is early, I would have thought. He's still got quite a lot of infantry. He's, the Eastlings, in fairness, have been a bit more conservative, I would have said, with their forces compared to Isengard. But, I mean, Isengard's still looking pretty good itself. It's got a, brought a lot of archers to the game. And these are also, oh, there's done herd archers in here as well, so it's not just his. But he is, he's... Lost a lot of melee infantry, I would say. Berserkers are left. He's going to have to rely on those pikes to just munch through a lot of these um, infantry, which is possible because I don't think um, the forces of good have any of their own pike capability. But it looks like it's all out retreat to this corner now defend here themselves against Gondor and Dol Amroth. They don't want to fight them head on in the field because of the huge amount of cavalry they have. Look at all these skirmishes running for the hills. They really need... So basically they have now been sandwiched between what remains of um, Eriador, which is not much, but Eriador is still holding strong over here with its um, merchant bodyguard. Let's check them out. Let's see how they're doing. They're surviving. Come on. Oh, good God. All the archer fire. That is nasty. And the Loki Rim halberds. These guys, along with the pikes of... Uh, Isengard are going to be key. And I mean, these guys are very much close combat right now. And it's, they probably want to give themselves a couple of yards just to allow the halberd to be a bit more effective. Oh, and now there's a deadly cavalry charge by the Breland General. And um, I presume this is 
the this might be the um Dunleading general as well yeah champion reavers is, oh no they just have champion reavers as a normal unit okay oh and the general is in here i thought he was so it's general versus general over here and it looks like um eridor's general is gonna give in and flee for the hills and he's getting cut down for it i mean he's not got much left i charge these archers do as much damage as you can to these archers sir they are, oh my good god it's like in um Return of the King when Faramir charges into the arches. God, they got devastated. This, that was a disgusting volley, and these guys are surely going to break soon because they've been chased down by more cavalry. And they're running through. Running for the hills. And I think the Breland General may be dead. I think he may be dead. Oh dear. And strangely, we're now in on this. Right. There we go. I think he is dead. Enemy general is dead. Yep, Breland. Well, Eridor have lost their general and he is broken and running. That is not pleasant to see. But the hill is now the now the evil forces. So now it's changed sides on who is to uh, attack and defend. And now if I was, um, well, now the forces of good are in a bit of a sticky position. Because they brought a lot of cavalry and really needed to stop, um, well, basically... All this infantry that was trapped out here from getting onto the hill. Because they could have really done with kept keeping them in combat down here. They have broken some Dunherd swordsmen. That's going to be handy. But there's still a lot of infantry and archers up here. There is a lot of Orakai archers. And du and the uh, Dunlading tribes also brought a lot of skirmishes of their own. But it looks like there's another combat going on out here. Oh, they managed to tra trap the champion Reavers. They need to kill these this general just for the morale bonus. They really need to kill this unit off. They've only lost one unit, though. They I mean, so are the Knights of the Silver Swan, in fairness. But you need to send in these Gondor Cavalry. You would have thought sending this one as well. Just try and kill these guys off. Dun Dunherd Chosen. And here, these double-handed axe guys. These look, they look excellent. What are these? These are... These are El Mountatanos the Lancers. These guys look excellent. I love the helmets, the little white feathers, <laughs> they're very nice. I mean, yes, they definitely need to break these, um, break this general and just kill him off. He's lost a few more, I mean, Knights of the Swan doing slightly better. They are hard to kill those Swan Knights, so hard, I mean, no wonder they're firing an arrows. I would just to try and kill them. Yep, yeah, hold them off, hold them off. The Lancers need to hold them off so they can't get this general out. Because if they can kill this general, then, I mean, morale in Rise of Mordor, um, it's, it's not great, I, I think, if a general dies. It's, it's very hard to recover. There's more Gondor cavalry coming in to help. It's this Bane of the Steps. You've got a small Varig warrior unit, more Bane of the Steps as well. They're sending in everything. Look, they're trying to get this champion out. They can, uh, champion Reavers out. They know what they're trying to do. And, I mean, they've gone down to about nearly half strength. Knights of the Silver Swan haven't even lost a, a sixth of their force yet. They're still going strong. Ridiculous. But, I mean, Gondor's now sending up the infantry as well. It's getting rinsed, though. It actually is. Oh, good charge by the Varig Warriors. Supported by pikes, um, not pikes, halberds and... Um, I think some foot infantry as well. That these things basically is a very good defense. Very good defense here. It's going to take a lot to get through. Just look at these guys. They look so nasty. I would not want to be on the end of those spit, those pikes, or halberds, whatever you want to call them. But I mean, this is a good mix. They've got arch support. They're going to need a lot more troops. They're going to break up here. And as you can see here, here there comes some Dol Amaroth forces. These look, I mean, these are just militia. Look at these levies. They're not going to break through. Militia, they're not going to do a lot. Just bodies going forward right now. Already, you can see Knights of the White Tree breaking. Knights of the White Tree at one unit, and it's still going strong. That is an insane unit. It's just broken now. I presume all got killed. That is insane. But yeah, they are not going to break through this anytime soon. What they need to do is they need to out-skirmish them because they're going to have a lot more ammo than them. I mean, apart from a few of these crossbow units, which are looking good on ammo, 
They've got a lot more ammunition which they can expend on uh, the infantry. And that's what they should do. They should just sit back and instead of throwing men at the wall of met of... Uh, oh no! No! Oh no! Oh yeah! That's actually brilliant. No, brilliant for the, the forces of good, which I'm kind of rooting for because they're definitely... Um, the power, balance of power is kind of in their favor, favor, but it's also not. I mean, they've got a thousand less men. But, I mean, that general dead is great. Excellent. And it's an ambush now. Apparently, this is an ambush. But I'm pretty sure they could see them anyway. I mean, but look at this defense. This is what I would do as well. Put a mix of halberdiers and infantry in here. And you just hold. They help support each other very nicely because halberdiers are protected by the shields of the swordsmen. Oof. I mean... They're protected by archers to a certain degree, but they're still going to get a few through. It look, It's still looking nasty, though. And now here they come. More archers. I presume have used up all their ammo. Are being sent in to hold back these swordsmen. Oh. I wouldn't have sent these guys in yet. I would have possibly used them to soak up ammo. Um, if they're shooting at archers that don't have... I know that's just a waste of the enemy's arrows. But I mean, more Varig warriors coming in now. They're sending, they just don't want them to get to this main line. Which is a bit strange. I'd let them get to this main line. Let them shoot at this. Um, and get friendly fire. Because it's just a, they're killing their own guys as well. They've done it perfectly on this side. I mean, look at all these tribal youths here. They must be getting a ridiculous amount of uh, kills with all their... Um, look at this angle. I mean, that is... With this... Look at that. They're not even getting there and they're getting knocked down by arrows. Well, arrows. Javelins. I keep calling them arrows. They are large arrows, I guess. My god. That is a disgusting... Disgusting thing to see. Yeah, these guys... These, this is going to be a hard defensive breakthrough. You're going to need archers up here. They're going to get archers to start focusing down these tribal youths. They've got some cavalry now over here for some reason. Gondor cavalry, I guess, just to try and sneak around the back, but... The pikes here have got this well and truly defended. This is locked down. The two fresh pikemen. I you can see what their plan was. They were going to they were going to just take the hill and then defend it with two loads, loads of pikemen here because it's two choke two choke points. And they've got plenty of infantry in the rear here if they need it. It looks like it's gonna be the Eastlings and the Dunladings taking most of the brute of the force to start with. Isengard. Um is using the remains of its infantry to defend the rear. So this is smart. Um, these Varig warriors here, they're not going to hold much longer, but they've done their job. They fought bravely. They're um, sitting there while the Gondor infantry just soaks up fire. Because look at this unit. I'm, this was a fresh unit. It's already below half strength. It's disgusting to see, but it's a great tactic. They've still got a lot of infantry, though. There's still a long way to go in this battle. And in fairness, even though they're... Oh, it's not. It's nearly two thousand difference now in, in men. I mean, they're already a th like almost a thousand men difference to start with. It's nearly two thousand is the is the uh, difference. But the infantry is a lot more armored, a lot more experienced. Well, not experienced, but um, just more elite. I mean, certainly then, but certainly then, like say the Dunherd, Isengard as well with most of their units bar the Pikes. At this point, um, the Eastlings probably have a fairly similar tier, like quality units. They're all fairly well armored themselves, so it's going to be close. But I, I'm I'm rooting for the goodies, mainly because they're the goodies, and they don't want Sauron to take over the world. But also because they are the underdogs at this point. I I bet they wish they could trade some of these this cavalry that they have right now. All of this cavalry that's like just sat around out here, just doing nothing for some inf some more infantry or some archers, because that's really what's needed. It looks like there's been a bit of a lull in the fighting. I mean, it's just down to this uh, Gondor infantry unit now. That's the only unit that's actually in combat, and they're not going to last much longer. They go as I say that it looks like they're about to break. Yep, breaking and yeah, that that's them gone. I'm loving this uh, officer unit though. Let's try and get a good, at, better look at him. Look at that guy. He's pretty cool. With his, with no helmet. He looks pretty damn cool. He looks a bit like Aragon. Oh, let's have this duel. Oh, he got a kill. Oh, and then he dies to an arrow. 
But I mean, look at this. Look at this. All these units here. I know these are Dunherd archers, but they look like they could probably do okay in combat. With that chainmail, they look like they could do okay. And there's a nice shield wall going on here. This is insane. That is that is pretty damn beautiful. All those wool heads. So many wolves died. It definitely is looking like um, a bit of a lot in the fighting. But there is another unit coming. Another fresh unit for the slaughter. Looks like more militia. Oh, it's the coastal levies. They're being sent in, reminded of where they are from. On their she on their breastplate. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. Um, yeah, I don't expect these guys to hold long. This doesn't even look like a full unit. Coastal Sea Watch, not Coastal Levies. Oh, yeah, they, that unit broke. It was never fresh. This one might hold a little longer, but I doubt it. And they're even taking the offensive down here with the Dunderdings. And, I mean, they're setting up some of their better units now. They're setting up some pretty elite stuff. The Sea Ward, I mean, in my eyes, it's, it's elite. Sea Ward, in, uh, Sword Infantry going up. Come on, boys. For the glory of Dol Amroth. In we go. Oh, God. They run, the archers are running, but there's a lot. Look at all those tribal youths. And here come in some uh, of the chosen. It, this is a hell. This is another form of hell for these guys. There's so many. Like, you're looking up on that ridge and, like, what is up there? And you just see, like, guys with a load of bows and arrows firing down. You can't even see some of the guys with bows and arrows. You just see the arrows. And then, and then it's death. And the Coastal Sea Watch is just about holding, but they're not really. They really need to put these archers further forward, commit them, and try and um, ki kill them. I mean, luckily they've committed a lot of archers, strangely, to allow their cavalry to run them down. I mean, they are, they are out of ammo, so I guess it's sort of a sacrifice to just like, try and pin the cavalry down and kill, kill some of them in combat, but it seems a bit strange. Why waste the cav them on cavalry when you could possibly use them in a choke point? If ever. Oh, the Seaward infantry already breaking. They are getting just massacred by arrows. And they're using their uh, shock infantry like the Cho uh, the Dunland chosen very well. And the Varag Warriors is throwing them in just before the clash of uh, the lines. I mean, now we've got a Talon Knight unit here. To try and flanking. That's going against. Um, well, actually, are, are these Reavers? Are these Orc Reavers? Oh, Blood Avengers. I've not seen these guys before, actually. These guys look pretty cool. They've got. They look like. Well, basically, they look like Urukai, but they're just men underneath. They look excellent. But, I mean, these guys don't look like they're going to last very long. They got charged by cavalry and they got shot a lot by their own, their own side. But I mean, look at the chaos that's going on. This is a proper battle. The chaos that is going on. Blooming heck. This is devastating. I mean, it's literally, it's reminding me of the Battle of the Bastards a bit because they are just firing. And they do not care whether they hit friend or foe at this point. As long as they're just, they're going into the area, just killing. I mean, let's look at the difference now in forces. Yeah, it is a, it's looking very much uh, impossible now for the forces of good. They may be uh, throwing the last dice now. I mean, there's a lot of archers left for the forces of evil, which they can think uh, they can take into mind. But they're well defended by pikes in the rear, um, and there's still a lot of. Um, uh, but they've also still got a lot of ammo, which is the only other problem. And they still got a lot of cav, I guess, that they can try and run the down the uh, archers with. But it's yeah, like it says, it, the tide of battle has probably turned in their favour, and in. Income more infantry. I think this is some fresh Urukai infantry, or basically fresh. And these Talon Knights, look, or Haven Guard, sorry, not Talon Knights. Haven Guard basically have uh, cut down the uh, their first load of opponents, the Varag Warriors. Not Varag Warriors, it was, the, um, it was these guys. These guys that have Blood Avengers. These guys, they just look so cool. They've got like the axes that like re the Uruk Reavers have. They have armor 
and they have like really cool armor. It looks really good. And there's a lot more stuff coming in now. A lot of talent now. See Spearman getting ready. Lots of um, Coast of Sea Watch getting mobilized. And what we've got back here. Oh, uh, this has got to be the Haven Guard. I would have thought. No, oh, Knights of the White Tree. Where am I getting Haven Guard from then? Oh, that's for, of course from Hate. That's from um, Third Age. Of course. My bad. Anyway, let's let's see how are they doing on the other side. I mean, it's just there's two massive brawls now at this point. I mean, this side. Oh, it's not looking good at all. They're sending up just like one unit at a time now as well. That was another thing that they've been. I say kind of doing wrong. It's it works in some scenarios that you just suck up all the firepower by sending in one cheap unit and hoping they will fire on it. But I mean, at this point, sending up one unit, it's just not going to do anything because they're sending about three or four in to counter you and right now they could flank which I would do with the possibly with the general you might as well at this point flank with the general get around you can break these units nice and quick what have they got left on this side Gondor cavalry and a few Nimrodel um, rangers that's about it all the infantry and all the forces have been committed here now basically apart from a few lone cavalry units that are kind of still dotted around for some reason you might as well get everything back here for one last go I mean, look at these halberds. They're, there's still 101 of them, and they're stretched just enough across the entire path. And they will hold for as long as possible. Though if I was, um, if I was Gondor now, I, I look how thin this line is. This is not going to stop a cavalry charge, even if it's halberds. Just smash through and carry on. Try and get behind. Maybe take out some of these archers with the cavalry. You'll cause some damage anyway. Like... It'll stop infantry because infantry can't just push through, punch through. But cavalry, you can punch through this small thin line. Certainly on that side, look, it's literally one, maybe two guys abreast. They really need to just punch through for one last gasp, grasp of victory. I mean, it looks beautiful. Even if they're losing the good guys, they look goddamn beautiful doing it. And I hope you guys are enjoying the battle. It's going to be a, it's been a long one. But it's been an epic one. Let's watch some of these duels. I just love watching the little duels. I mean, this guy, he's taken about three or four guys. And half of them have now run off. Oh, come on, Knight of the White Tree. Kill him. Get a kill. Yes. Cut that guy down. Shame on him for cu coming out of line. Cut, these, cut this guy down. He's taken on two. He has the balls to take on two of you. Yes. Dead. These hit these are uh, Knight of the White Trees. Uh, they're doing a little bit of work. Oh, another one. He's beheaded another one. And these coasts to Sea Watch are back for another attempt. Cavalry look like they're gonna do a charge. Here they come. Boom! Told you they break oof. They nearly broke through. They have broken through. There you go. Broken through. Go for the archers. As I said, they've done it. Finally. They've broken through. So now they can cause chaos in the back with all these archers. Hopefully. Excellent. Here we go. There's not, there's, to be fair, there's not much on this flank now to stop them. They could probably kill a lot of this stuff off, but I don't think they can do it. I mean, there's still a lot, there's still a lot of infantry over here. It's just this Gondor cavalry that's valiant Gondor cavalry that's holding them back. Brave, brave men. They really needed to catch. The mistake they made, because we're coming to the end of the battle, the mistake the, uh, the goodies kind of made was um, not trapping like more of the Dunherd army and the Eastling army outside of um, this choke point, basically, in my opinion. I don't. I know it's easier said than done, um, and look at that, mass break. Um, that's Dol Amroth's just broken entirely, basically. It's just Gondor left. But I mean, it's easier said than done, I guess, but um, that's what I would have possibly tried to do, um, because... As you can see, they've just defended this choke, these two choke points very well, and they're very hard to break down. The only other way you could have possibly done it was just to skirmish them down. Let your Yes, your archers are going to possibly die to their archers, and um, but you're going to kill either their archers or their, your infantry, and it's better that your archers die to arrows than your infantry, your melee infantry, which is like what so many of these guys did up here. I mean, look, I'll look show you the pile of dead that's going on over here. It's just ridiculous. Like, this pile of dead. There's so many, um, like, Dol Amroth troops in there. Of all their, like, shapes and sizes and quality. 
And same down this path here, there's just so many dead from archers that could have been avoided if they'd um, tried to just shoot down theirs. Or just shoot down um, or shoot down the infantry and make them their archers waste ammo on your archers. But I mean, what's left now? It's just the general and he's getting cut down. So, um, yeah, that's probably, that's really the battle that's kind of over. And these, these swan, these swan knights, we'll call them basically, because that's what they are. Knights of the Silver Swan. They're going to take a little while to, uh, to break, but you never know. They might do it eventually. They're uh, going to take ages to break and ages to kill them. Just send in all your troops at this point. Just kill them. Overwhelm these guys. They're actually going to break these champion reavers first. No surprise, to be fair, because their general uh, is dead. In fairness, I'm um, done. The dings have done well to do as well um, as they have without a general. I'm not sure what they've really got left. Looks like it's really Isengard and the Eastlings that have really um, finished this battle off. It does look, like, yeah, it does look like that way. The Dunladings are basically all gone. Yeah, at this point, just execute these guys with arrows. Execute, because that's the only way you're going to kill them. They're so goddamn elite. Here they go. Execution by arrows. One final charge. One final charge for glory. King at the front there with the red cape on. Into their forces. For the Prince of Dol Amroth. And for Frodo. Who these guys definitely didn't know about. Yeah, they're surrounded now. They're gonna. There it is. Inevitable. Now you definitely play. Just do it like Ramsey Bolt, and you just kill everything with the arrows. You're just gonna kill these guys. They're breaking at 41. Wow, an etheric victory. Um, I'd say certainly close. I don't think it was etheric, but we'll look at the end end results. So thank you very much, uh, Lol Watt, for uh, sending this video in. I really appreciate it. Um. It's an excellent battle. Very, very good. Um, so we'll quickly look at his army first. He was playing as the Eastlings. Um, yeah, he got a lot of kills with his uh, Loki Rim Warriors, which helped support his Halberdiers. Look at this Halberdier unit. Near 300 kills. His Varig Warriors, which were excellently used in um, like just shock attacks, just as they were about to clash lines. Look at this one, 216. This one nearly getting 200 itself. Cavalry doing okay. They were kind of outmatched by the um, Swan, uh, the Knights of the Swan, and um, the Gondor Cavalry. But his archers as well getting a load of kills. These ones nearly getting 200 each. These two, unfortunate. These thing nomadic archers. I didn't see them. I should have probably been looking out for them. But um, they they look very cool. Um, we'll quickly look at Canary Boy. So he's got um, his general didn't get very many kills and got killed off. Unfortunately for him got surrounded by a cavalry and then focused down by archers. Um, he had two Dunherd uh, archers that survived, basically. Everything else got massacred, well, not massacred, but killed off. Um, as he was kind of, like, in charge of defending the rear, sort of. Um, Dunherd Chosen's getting a fair amount of kills. His Blood Avengers doing fairly well as well. They look epic as well while doing it. Dunherd Swordsman not doing so well. Um, like Unlike in past um, battles where I've seen them do excellent. Um, but his tribal youths doing excellent. I mean, they gun down hundreds, as you can see here, of poor Gondor and Dol Amroth troops. They did excellent. And then uh, Warlord Pillagers and Champion Reavers just getting outmatched by the cavalry. Cavalry is one of the things that the um, forces of good did so well. And then um, I presume that Sergeant Deadman. Um, I, or, yeah. Um. So Naz, uh, Naz High Guardians doing excellent. 178 kills and he barely took any damage. Wow, that is an elite unit. Then we've got Urukai Infantry doing very standard, doing very well. Urukai Scouts took up a lot, soaked up a lot of ammunition and some of them doing some good damage. His Berserkers, wow, they all did very well. They, they were very good. And it, I mean, the Pike's not doing much. But they had a very big part to play in defending the rear. And his crossbows doing excellent, getting so many kills. Along with his Urukai archers. Um, as you can see from like the amount of archers he brought compared to um, Canary and Lol Watt. You could tell what he was uh, designated, what his job was designated to. Bring the archers. And when we take that hill, we rain 
hell on them. So um, Deus Vault, um, his general doing very well on two, three, three kills. That's um, pretty good. His all his cavalry getting nearly a hundred plus kills, if not two hundred, doing very well. His infantry, apart from two units, did pretty poorly, which is a shame to see. But they just got focused down by archers, um, unfortunately. And then we've got Sergeant Major Joe with Dol Amroth. He did. Pretty well, he brought a fair amount of archers. Shame he didn't possibly uh, commit them more to focusing down, like I said, infantry. Um, his sea, sea Ward Swordsman infantry um, did fairly well. I love this unit, and um, yeah, they, they kind of just got a bit massacred themselves. A lot of it, um, because we'll see watching levies here, or militia that kind of didn't really do a lot. He possibly could have done with just bringing some more elite units instead of these ones. Um, Haven Guard. Did very well. They were always going to do well. And these Tarnosian Spearmen, unfortunately, just didn't really seem to crack it this time, unfortunately. And then Smokey, who played as Eridor, did an excellent job of defending the top of the hill for as long as he did. I didn't think it was gonna he was going to last that long, but he did very, very well. Um, so Heavy Greenway Lancers did excellent. And, well, Baggins' Private Guard, Ripping Peace Hobbits. And bodyguards doing very well, breathing spearmen doing very well, and archers getting a lot of kills as well. So anyway, guys, I'll leave those um, stats up there for you to look at because I don't want to carry on forever and look at them because it could forever and ever. Um, and this episode is getting, oh, this video is getting long anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed, and um, please like and subscribe if you have and you're new around here. We're getting close to 500 subs, and I really hope we can get there soon. I've appreciated all the support so far, guys. Um, thank you very much. And until next time, legionnaires. Bye for now.